Last video, I almost burned down my workshop. Okay, not really, but I did spend some time blasting metal chips at some poorly covered electrical components, which is generally considered a bad idea. So before I actually cause myself problems, I'm going to need a better CNC controller. There's kind of three ways I could go about this. Either A, build the electronics onto the machine, B, build the electronics into an enclosure for the machine, or C, build a standalone controller that's completely separate from the machine. As you probably guessed by the thumbnail, I went with option C. My main logic behind this choice is that I should be able to use a standalone controller for a variety of future projects, saving me time designing in the future. I got to brainstorming some ideas. Aside from the obvious function, I wanted the design to have a heavy emphasis on modularity, to make swapping out components as easy as possible in the future. Initially, I was pursuing a tower type form and came up with the idea of blocks that could stack onto threaded rod to create different sized enclosures. Each block also featured this rib pattern, which would provide more support for components and in theory make installation much easier. It wasn't long into experimentation with this design, however, that YouTube kindly served me this video from Jeff Geeling about 10 inch mini racks. And so, through a happy little coincidence, a new idea was formed. Take my existing idea of stackable blocks, but design them around the 10 inch rack standard. It didn't take me long in CAD to come up with my block design. Each block is the equivalent of one unit on a server rack. There are two varieties of these blocks I designed, one with heat set inserts, and the other with regular nuts that slide in place. I'd say heat inserts are definitely the better design, aside from the fact I really didn't want to install several dozen heat set inserts. Because of this, I opted to go with the nut design. And after printing out 20 blocks and a bunch of spaces, the build could begin, as always, with some printed parts. First, we install a few M6 nuts into the base, along with four lengths of threaded rod, and then can start building the unit up. The nut design involves stacking nuts and spaces as you go, which I honestly found kind of cathartic, although a little finicky. I stack the blocks higher and higher onto the threaded rod spines which serve to overcome the weakness in the printed layer lines. The rack works with outside panels, but I chose to add some. The side panels I'm painting here are laser cut. If I ever adjust the rack size, these are the only parts I can't reuse, so I didn't want them to be made of plastic. A final step for my frame is to add this subdivider to the top of the frame. This is a cool feature that commercial racks don't have, allowing for up to three columns and far more possible combinations. And with that, the basic frame is done. It really is pretty easy. But an empty frame isn't much use, so now we need to make the modules to go inside. Starting from the bottom is the main electronics board. This houses the CNC controller, spindle, power supply, and composite converter. First, I prepare the connector panel with some power and stepper ports that will later connect to the CNC machine. I'm using these GX12 connectors. These three are for the steppers, and I'll later add two more for end stops and other sensors. This whole assembly is mounted to the main board along with the power supply. Following this, the video converter for the monitor is glued in place. Then its subboard and the CNC controller can also be mounted, covering the wires for the steppers. 
These smaller subboards mean I can change any of these components in the future with minimal reprints. The next module is for the micro PC I'll use to run Candle. This would be a super easy install if the power button wasn't on the top of the machine. To remedy this, it gets screwed into this sliding mechanism, and then secured with a cover panel. This setup allows the power button to be exposed when I need it, but doesn't mean the PC has to jut out the front at all times. The final big module is the CRT. Modeling CRTs is always a pain. I've rehoused them before, but they come in all shapes and sizes, so I needed to create new CAD for the one I'm using this time. Instead of trial and error, this time I decided to try scanning. First, I covered the monitor in tape, since the scanner can't pick up reflective materials. These large, smooth, and featureless objects are really tough for the scanner, and it took a few tries. I took a couple of scans to get just enough data to move forward. Using these, I was able to trace the curves I needed to get a good enough fit for the CRT, although I probably could have played with it a little more. Smallest panels are used for the spindle RPM and e-stop. I've got a couple of spare spots I may or may not fill in the future, but luckily they're nice and easy to change out. As a final touch, there is a little more optional augmentation that can be done. To the sides of the machine, secondary panels can be added. In this case, IKEA scatter boards, but multi-board or similar could also be used. I use this for holding the notes I write while running mill programs, but there's a million things that you could mount here. On the top, I made a Gridfinity board to fit the space. Previously, all my collets were kind of poorly organized, but now I've got a space that makes sense. I'm considering filling in the rest of the space with end mills or something similar. Overall, not too shabby. But that concludes the build, at least for this video. I still need to do the other half of the wiring on the mill which is currently in pieces, so I can't really show it working. I also need some new power connectors to properly finish up the electronics enclosure. However, I think you get the idea of how the system works and what it's capable of. I am releasing the files, but only blank boards. But since it's the 10 inch standard, it's totally possible to use other people's designs or make your own with the step files. Overall, I am pretty happy with the design. The aluminum I ordered has arrived, so once everything is properly wired up, I can get back to upgrading the mill with itself, and then get back to the lathe. Thank you to my patrons and to you, as always, for watching.